Hello YouTube, it's Exorcizzle. I'm really sorry, I know I promised I'd do a Fatal Frame 4 video next, but I realized it would actually make a lot more sense to go ahead and talk about Dr. Azo first, the inventor of the Camera Obscura. He plays a pretty big role in Fatal Frame 4 and an even bigger role in Fatal Frame 5, so I think it's finally time to get started. So, uh, make sure to subscribe, and then let's start. Alright, let's go. Kurihiko Azo was a doctor of engineering, a psychiatrist, and an occult and folklore researcher. He was born on Mount Kagiroi sometime around the mid-1800s. We still have no idea when he was born, though, so bear with me. Azo was almost always interested in the spirit world, even from a young age, and believed in it wholeheartedly. When he was playing outside one day, he met Shiragiku, a tiny little white-haired girl with red eyes, and befriended her. Sometime later, Shiragiku had a near-death experience, and combined with her frail body, she was deemed an A-plus sacrifice. She was going to be sunk on Mount Hikami soon, so to help distract her from the pain, she was allowed to pick someone to join her in ghost marriage. I know, it sounds really weird, I'll get there. She, of course, chose her best friend, Azo. Just as she was about to enter her box, or reliquary, as it's called in the game, Azo used a knife to cut off a lock of her hair, which she then passed down through his family, all the way down to Ren in 2006. I don't know how he did that, but he did. As Azo grew up, his memories of Shiragiku faded and he began to question whether it all really happened or not. He may have even thought he was forced to stab Shiragiku. That's what at least Ren and I thought. Or maybe it was just me. Is, is it just me? Or did you also think that Ren killed a little girl at the beginning of the game? I thought he killed someone. I don't know. Anyway, Azo continued to pursue his interest in the occult, maybe because of this incident, and eventually heard about postmortem photography. If you don't know already, photography was still so expensive in the late 1800s that when people would die before having photos taken, the living would dress them up and pose with them to get photos to remember them by. People didn't have enough money to go down to Sears and get their holidays photo taken. Also, Sears didn't exist. Dr. Azo believed that postmortem photographs captured death in the human soul in a way that we can't with our bare eyes, so he started working on a camera that could actually capture the shadows or souls on paper in order to prove the existence of the spirit world. He traveled all around the Mikomori region of Japan, taking photos of all the dead bodies he could along the way, and made a lot of people very happy, especially those around Mount Hikami, who said the photos looked like the paintings of the pillars on Mount Hikami. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think this just means the photos were abnormally soothing. Mount Hikami got word of his special photographs and invited him to come take a photo of Ose Kurosawa, their new great pillar, or basically their strongest shrine maiden. Part of Mount Hikami's ghost marriage is that they have to also make sure you have a singles ad so that when a man comes to the mountain to commit suicide, he doesn't have to do it all alone. He has a whole wall of paintings of women to choose from. It's truly beautiful. The locals thought Aso's photo would express Osei's soul more clearly than a painting. Dr. Aso continued taking his special photographs and contemplating death of the human soul while visiting the island as usual. You know, just usual Kunihiko Aso things. When he saw Osei for the first time at the house of joining, he instantly fell in love and she with him. Neither one of them said anything, but an unspoken bond was formed anyway. He took her photograph, and either because Osei was a very spiritually sensitive person or because Azo had an almost decent camera, it actually bit off a piece of Osei's soul. Azo left the mountain and took that piece of Osei with him, probably using it as inspiration for his future research. He continued investigating folklore and the occult and kept working on a camera obscura with some actual exorcismal power. He began investigating a dream disease currently affecting some of his psychiatric patients and met Kaname Ototsuki, Reka the last tattooed priestess's boyfriend. Kaname described coming into contact with the spirit world in his dreams, so Dr. Azo decided to interview him on tape for further research. But also, hopefully also to help Kaname out. I'd like to think Azo was a good guy. Konami left Azo's house in the middle of the night, leaving behind the Echo Stone earring he got from his parents. The good thing he did that, though, because Azo actually used that earring to modify the receiver in an otherwise normal radio to play back thoughts containing crystals that someone wore for a really long time. This was his first invention to bear fruit. The radio really could pick up on sounds and voices that couldn't be detected otherwise. He named it the Otherworld Crystal Radio Signal Receiver, or the Spirit Stone Radio for short. Sometime later, Dr. Azo visited Rogetsu Island, another place with some very grim folklore surrounding it. He came to the island specifically because of its weird beliefs involving masks, the moon, and sending spirits off to the other side. I believe he also came to the island to help out with all the Getsuyu Syndrome patients. I won't be going into too much detail about this here since I will be doing an, a video explaining Fatal Frame 4 soon, but basically when a patient has Getsuyu Syndrome, they lose their memories when the moon fades and get them back when the moon is full again. To help patients get their memories back, Dr. Azo made a moonlight-powered flashlight and named it the Spirit Stone Flashlight, indicating he might have used part of the Echo Stone earring he used for the radio in this invention as well. Another thing you need to know before we can continue is that when a shrine maiden on the island puts on a mask, that mask creates a connection between our world and the spirit world, so the mask kind of functions as a doorway. Dr. Azo started focusing his research on the mask because of this and discovered how to make the black paint that was used on the sacred mask. 
He then used the techniques to enhance various parts of his camera, in particular the film. Okay, it's time for a personal theory, and I'm gonna warn you, this one is really fucking weird. I am not a scientist, so I could be 150% wrong about this, but since the Sacred Mass and Fatal Frame 4 are supposed to be made from the dried human faces of those who have butted, and film is traditionally coated with black gelatin deposit, and gelatin is made up from ground up bones, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to say that Dr. Ozzo made the film for the camera obscura by finding the bones of those who had butted and grinding them up and then using that to make his gelatin for his film. Or maybe he found some bones that had already been grounded up. I don't really know. Maybe the island already had a stockpile of pre-butted gelatin. This game is probably the vaguest of the entire series, so I really have no fucking idea. Anyway, Ozzo felt really good about this camera's ability to capture the spirit world, but to his knowledge, he never really got to test it out. Many years later, probably 60 or 70 years after he had visited, an islander finally saw something on one of Dr. Oslo's photos that he knew for a fact was not there. One of the forbidden sacred masks that had been destroyed at least 70 years earlier. While on the island, Dr. Oslo had went to Akagura, the tourist version of the now forbidden Kiraigo, and took a photo of the vessel. Nobody realized that the mask was the mask from all the legends, either because Dr. Oslo just didn't show anyone the photo, or because the islanders did such a good job of censoring everything that the mask was forgotten only four or five generations later, so Oslo never realized that he did do something right. He left the prototype camera at the island to be kept on display at the museum dedicated to him. He thought he could make an even better camera obscura, made yet another camera prototype and a projector that could play actual videos of the spirit world. Seihiro Makabe, another folklorist and good friend of Dr. Azo, visited him and told him he was going to investigate the forbidden ritual in Minakami Village, also known as the Crimson Sacrifice Ritual. Azo lent Makabe the second camera obscura prototype in the Spirit Stone radio and never got it back because, spoiler alert, Makabe died. Azo continued his research into the spirit world in ways to strengthen the camera obscura for the rest of his life. At some point, he had read about a special holy mirror inside Himuro Mansion, another very cursed location. Possibly the most cursed location! Fatal Frame 1 is fucked. It is insane. It is so fucking hard. I have still never beat it. Anyway, of course, Ozzo decided to go to Himuro to find the mirror and figure out a way to use it to make the camera even stronger. He never gave up trying, that's for damn sure. The other benefit of coming to the worst place ever is that he could test out the camera in a seriously cursed environment instead of just in a regularly cursed environment. He managed to get his hands on a piece of the holy mirror and he jammed it inside one of his cameras and it actually worked! Miku's camera is sick as fuck! After going to Himuro, Dr. Ozzo was never seen nor heard again. There are some theories that he's supposed to be the hostile ghost bound man in Fatal Frame 1, but the only evidence I can find is that they were both victims of the rope curse and there is supposed to be a subplot about Dr. Ozzo in this game, but it got cut. I don't know, I don't really like this theory, but I guess it is possible. Unfortunately, Ozzo didn't keep very good documentation of how to make his inventions for whatever reasons, and so he took a lot of them with him to the grave. Very few of his cameras, radios, and projectors still work, and they were scattered throughout Japan by collectors and enthusiasts, making them even more rare. There are currently 12 cameras we know for a fact still exist, but there are probably going to be even more in future installments. Most of the cameras are so old that they break within a day or two of consistent use, so at the end of the game, or the protagonist is too mentally scarred to take it back with them. The cameras and other gadgets, and therefore Ozzo himself, I guess, just don't have very good luck. Even his descendants frequently die young or are spirited away, leading some, including Misa, Mio and Mayu's father, to take their wife or husband's last name and attempt to escape the curse. At least in Misa's case, though, this does not work. And I'm gonna end things on that very depressing note. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let me know down below. I'm gonna run out of Fatal Frame stuff to talk about one day, so if you have any other video games, let me know about those too, and I will look into them. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future videos, and I will be back soon. Bye!